And we are back. I leave this room after finishing my final exam and breathe a sigh of relief. As I'd hoped, the exams weren't so bad. I managed to breathe through just about everything but the English final. And even that was acceptable. I wonder how Emmy did. Terrible. Even more so, how she's doing. She looked terrible at lunch today. I mean, she was pretty happy to be out of her wheelchair, but she was so exhausted. Something's been we something's been wearing her down, and I'm starting to really doubt that it was just the exams. Good man. Should I confront her about this though? Yes. My musing is interrupted by a tap on the shoulder. Hey, sir. Muto! Oh! Got a minute? Um. I suppose I can spare a few minutes? Yes? Yes? Yes. Yeah, I've got time. Nowhere important to be or anything like that. Muto raises an eyebrow as if questioning my statement, then beckons me back into the classroom. I wanted to get some feedback from you if I could. About? I know that this course wasn't quite up to your level. Don't worry about it. The science club activities more than made up for it. Hmm? Did they? Well, in fact, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Do you think that was a worthwhile activity? Just for my own reference? Well, yeah. It was a great way to further... Then... It was a great way to go further than we did in class. It was definitely worthwhile. Muto seems delighted by my response. That's great. Exactly the for so thought of thing I was hoping sort of thing I was hoping for. <laughs> Jesus. You know, sir, I'm glad you came here. It's always good to have a student who really gets into the subject you teach. In a way, it makes dealing with the rest of the students more tolerable. You're a right kid too. You look took do this stuff like a duck to water, or some other such simile. Uh, thanks. You were a great help, especially with this college stuff. There's one more thing as now. A bit of advice from one scientist to another. What's that? What does a scientist do? Um, I think you're gonna need. A, uh, you want more than just experiments. Observe the world around him? Exactly, good. Okay, I was wrong. A simple question, but one that most people can't seem to answer. That's the essence of, sci of a scientist to say. We observe what's, what's there and try to figure it out. But what if there's something you can't figure out? What's a scientist to do if he can't observe something? How, for example, can we talk about quarks when nobody has ever actually seen one. Or black holes when observing them directly is impossible. While scientific equipment is scientific equipment's pretty advanced. Muto ir irritably waves away my response. No, that's not it at all. Those are tools. I'm trying to give you a f f philosophy. Think. If you can't observe something directly, then how can you observe it? Uh, I guess. Uh, guess? How? How would you guess the movement of a quark? What is your gr guess based on? Of course. I should have thought of it earlier. The thing it affects. Muto claps his hands together excitedly and whoops. <laughs> yes, exactly. Good. Remember that, so. If you can't examine something directly, it's because you're looking at it wrong. You have to look at it differently. If you want to uncover the truth, and if it eludes you, then look at what it leaves behind. That is the essence of being a scientist. We never stop looking for the answer. Never take anything for granted. Observe, experiment, and observe some more. There's a lot of stuff out there that makes no sense to so Your job is to get it to make sense. If nothing else, I hope you've learned that here. I think I can remember that. Oh my, did I? Nope. Muto smiles satisfied. Good, now go enjoy your time off. You've earned it. 
Yay! I, I leave the room feeling a little confused. What brought that on? Oh, no. <gasps> Did we somehow get enlightenment? Am I going about this with Emmy the wrong way? Okay, if we're going by that Quark's theory, then surely the person that's affecting is you. Or maybe... <laughs> oh, I've got it. Might be dangerous, but I've got it. If she won't tell me, then I can go about it some other way. Come on, please tell me you've got it. The question keeps spinning in my head after I made my way back to my room. Come on, tell me you've got the answer, Sal, because I've got it. What if she gets angry about it? Besides, what if it's nothing? If I'm going, if I go in and refuse to leave until she t she tells me what's wrong or something, won't that come off as clingy? Oh, you've got got the wrong answer. I don't want to start a fight or anything over something like that. Let's just see what he, else he says. Maybe I should just drop the matter and see how she is tomorrow before I do anything. At, at, do anything. Would it be so bad to just let it go? Let it go. Let it go. It's not like we don't enjoy each other's company. But odd as it sounds, I really want to help her. I don't even know what w with or if there's anything at all she needs help for. But I want to. Who's knocking? And why haven't you figured it out? I mean, it's obvious. We go to the mother. Suddenly a knock at my door rouses me. Oh, my mother. I open it to see Kenji. Oh, it's you. It's me? That's it? If you had any idea what I, I'd been through, what I'd done, you'd be happier to see me, dude. I mean, that was so epic, you may never see me again, shit. And here you are, just acting like I went down to the storeroom for some milk. I said storeroom, didn't I? You're a cold man, Sal. I really respect that. I don't need your respect. Uh, thanks, I guess. It's smart, it's smart to play it safe, you know? Don't show any emotion. Keep your cards close to your chest. Unless it's time to show your cards, or have, a bad, or have bad cards, then you should fold or collect your winnings. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense. I take it, uh... Mission went well. The rather. Whoa, awfully nosy of you, isn't it? You can't just go saying things like that. Things are that things are at a delicate stage. One wrong move and bam, the invasion succeeds. I thought you were going to blow the conspiracy wide open. Oh God, it's bigger than I thought. I need to update my charts. I probably change some of the puppets around. Puppets. <laughs> You want to help? I've got some whiskey from somewhere. You can fill me in on anything your own investigation has turned up. Uh, bad or not, I'm uh, supposed to meet her today. Gotta go do that. Can't raise suspicion. Kenji nods in approval. Still keeping it cl keeping it close to the chest, eh? Okay, man. I respect that. Good luck. Uh, thanks. Oh God. I'm just going to pretend for the sake of my own sanity that he's wishing me luck in talking to Amy. And if I squint that whole card analogy he was talking about works here. Time to lay it all on the table. We'll see if I can't get Amy to, sh to do so, rather. With the sense of something approaching of something approaching purpose, I head for Emmy's room. Oh god, this is gonna be bad. Where's Luxord when you need him? We're making poker references. He'd be a winner. He is a winner. <laughs> I hope I hop up the stairs leading to her room and knock on the door. I'm falling down. Oh god, please don't tell me again, changed. Uh, who's it? Huh? That's odd. Uh, her voice sounds a little choked. It, it, it wasn't out of um, shock. Hey, it's me. Thought I'd stop by. 
Is that him? Come on in. I reach down to open the door, only to find that it's locked. More and more curious. Uh, your door's locked. Oh yeah, sorry. Give me a minute. Rinny! You've locked Rinny out! In a few minutes, Sammy opens the door, grinning. Sorry, I had to put my legs on. I was napping. Despite a grin, there's something definitely off. Push! Amy's eyes are slightly red and it looks like she's been crying. Hey, no problem. Oh, God. Uh, you okay? Huh? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't lie. The evidence is on your face. It's just how you look like you've been crying. Oh, yeah, so You're off to a great start on this one. <laughs> you just played the cards on the table. Two. Oh, God. What? Nah, I'm fine. I'm just having to see you. She's using her feminine wiles. She punctuates this with a long kiss that continues as the door slams shut behind us. I know what she wants to do now, and I'm also painfully aware of how badly I want to do it. Hold back, man. Hold back. I break the kiss with a wretch of self-control that nearly kills me. Hey, wait. Amy's eyes crinkle in confusion. Huh? Wait, what for? We need to talk. Isn't that supposed to be my line? It is? What? And never a good thing to say. She's got a point. It isn't. It usually leads into a breakup. Oh, for God's sake. Or the prelude to a fight. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe it can be a good thing this time. Y your, your, your hope is misguided. Uh, that's my hope. and That's the hope, anyway. Uh-huh. Can we at least get onto the bed? It's my first day back on these things, and I'm still re re readjusting. Readjusting? Plus, the nurse said I should try to be on them less often, since running put such a strain on them. Can't argue with that. So she's wearing the metal ones. It's a trap. We both know it, and we both don't care. Then again, it's awfully hard to get angry while in bed with the object of your affection. OBJECT?! Okay. Affections. So maybe there's that motivation too. This is gonna end badly. I set Emmy's legs by the bedside and sit down next to her, throwing an arm around her shoulders. In silence, we just enjoy being able to be in this position again for a few minutes. Then, of course, I need to ruin it by opening my mouth. Look, I know that, that you've been having kind of a rough time... Bleh, kind of a rough time of it lately. That doesn't make any sense, to me at least. I want to help you out. Oh god, never say that. But that's probably going to lead badly. I thought it was just exams getting to you, but now I come to your room. Yeah, come to your room and you've been crying and that kills me. But I can't do anything if you won't talk to me about it. Oh, for God's sake! I told you, I'm fine. No, you aren't. It's obvious something's eating you, eating out of you. You can tell me, you know, she doesn't trust you. There's the slightest increase in tension in Emmy's voice. Oh, God. Why is my saying I'm fine not good enough? You're concerned. I get that. That's cool. But I'm fine. And there's nothing that you need to worry about. Not sleeping and spacing out more than Rin doesn't strike me as being fine. I just want help. Uh huh. We're gonna be. We, you're all gonna be made to look like the bad guy. You can see it now. Yeah, I don't like seeing you like this. I want you to be happy, you know. Oh god, that angry face. Prepare for the shrapnel to be fired. I get the feeling that came out wrong because Emmy fixes me with an icy stare. <sighs> no, we that what? How did she just So you want to fix me yourself? Did we Oh for God's sake Did the words fix you come out of his mouth? She's definitely getting angry now. Come on, re turn it around, turn it around to her. Wanna swoop in on your white charger and save the day? W what? What is she 
stop the nightmares, the phantom Lin pains? Restore what's lost? Oh, for God's sake. Her voice catches in her throat and tears start to flow. Well, you can't. Nobody can. Nobody will. Stop saying the word nobody. Don't taint it. I'm so stunned by a sudden verbal assault that I remain quiet. See, you look like the bad guy now. Neither of us say anything for a while. I'm surprised that Emmy tightens her grip on me rather than pushing me away. After a deep breath, she starts talking again. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bull. I just... There's these nightmares. That's painfully obvious. About the accident. What? Ah, the accident. I shouldn't know. What? How she lost her legs? Oh, yep. It took her legs, after all. But it never comes up. Of course. And I usually deal with them fine because I can run. Running clears my head like nothing else. I don't have to worry about anything while I'm running. I just concentrate on breathing, on the rhythm of things. Right. It's easier that way. Life's easier that way. So escapism. Just keep moving forward, you know? Nothing else matters. Just getting around the next curve. And then it's the next curve, and the next, and the next. Until I can't go anymore. Or think anymore. Or do anything but slow down and walk until I catch my breath again. After something like that, nothing else matters. But I've been stuck in that goddamn wheelchair for too long, so no outlet. Today it just kind of boiled over a little. You could have talked to me about it, you know. You didn't have to go it to go it alone. Emmy smiles sadly, like she's trying to explain to a child that all fires, all fire burns. Oh, don't give me a fire reference. <laughs> don't you dare. Bloody catalyst. My rage is gone, don't mistake me if you know what I'm on about, but still. Yeah, I did. And I do. But why? Why do you have to keep going through this alone? Why can't you just trust me enough to let me help you? Oh, yeah. She trusts you enough for all. About you, bow wow. And even more so, experiments. <clears throat> that smile again. Emmy leans in and kisses me on uh, on my cheek. An almost motherly gesture. Ugh. She leaves her mouth closed to... Cl she leaves her mouth clo close to my ear as she confesses this one thing to me. Because of how... I've already had everything I knew ripped away from me once. I don't know what I'd do if it happened again. She pauses as if uncertain as to whether or not she should continue. Just continue. I can feel a violent churning in my gut. Oh god, control yourself, man. She continues. So I can't rely on you. Or the nurse. Or anyone else. Just me. That's how it's got to be. Having delivered this short speech, she looks down and covers her mouth with the back of her hand. The conversation is clearly over. I search for something to say, but can't think of anything. Maybe I should go for now. Don't lie. Emmy doesn't even look up. She sounds tired or relieved. I can't tell which. Okay, sir. Go take go take care of that stuff. I'll see you tomorrow. I get off the bed and head for the door, pausing at the doorway. Hey, Emmy. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake! A thousand things I want to say. I'm too mixed up to uh, to say any of them though. After her admitting that she'll never let me close, I feel like my world's just been ripped out of me. Oh, grow up here. What happened in that accident? I know she lost her legs, but that's never seemed to bother her. What happened there? What scares a girl so badly that she won't accept help even from someone she loves? Well, she thought she doesn't love you. I don't know. But I want to know. 
I want to know so badly that being denied that answer feels like a knife in my gut. Child. Is that? You were saying? I'm still standing in the doorway. Nothing. Never mind. And I'm closing the door and walking down the hallway. Down the stairs. Out the door. Into the dark. Somehow I wander back into my own room. My brains are doing a mile a minute, going nowhere fast. Oh my god. I can't figure out how to deal with this. I thought that moving forward was a good thing. Dwelling less on a past that I can't change. Living in the present and looking at the future. After this thing with Emmy, I'm not sure anymore. She was saying the truth. It's similar to look at the next curve, ignoring the path go gone by. No worry about the opponent left behind. No care for the spectators on the sidelines. And unfortunately, no time to watch out for lagging teammates either. I throw, ooh, I throw myself down on the bed, looking at the corner of my ceiling as if the answer I want were written up written there. No such luck, of course. But of course! Oh, for the love of God. She's literally running away from something, but ha but have I not been doing the same thing? Try my best to forget about my hospitalization. Well, so far we haven't had anything like that. I'm getting better, but my health isn't going to magically fix itself. Abby has two legs instead of a heart to deal with, but those aren't going to magically fix themselves either. Maybe this is just a as fixed as the both of us can get. The room becomes darker and darker until I can't really tell I'm looking at a corner anymore. The morning comes too soon on the heels of a sleepless night. Is this how Emmy's been, sp Emmy's been spending her nights? Staring at the wall or ceiling? Trying to stop thinking about whatever it is? Her in my case. That clenched feeling in my gut is still there. I can't rely on you. Words spoken so casually. You never rely on any anyone. I mean, that's the first thing that I like her saying. Almost like she were teasing me or chastising me for suggesting that the earth is flat. That's how it's got to be. It's the way it's got to be sucks. Well, it's life. I'm feeling so miserable that I very nearly decided to skip the run. I would be stupid though. It's not something I should do just to, s just to see her. What? That would be stupid though. It's not something I should do just to see her. Okay, sure that was the original reason, but it's something more now. I started to enjoy the running itself. Oh no! There are worse ways to get the blood flowing anyway. Never thought I'd say after the first week or so, but I feel a lot better after my, uh, after a run. Like, no matter what else I do today, I've at least done that one thing. It wakes me up too, and Emmy herself said that running always clears her mind. Maybe it'll help clear mine. Hope so. And with that, I'll leave you all off. Ugh, I need a drink. Good day. And I'll see you in the next episode.